Desert. Your Ninja is in Riyadh, the capital city of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And we're at Black Hat, Middle East and Africa 2023. I'm standing in front of Kingdom Center. This massive tower is a harbinger for the modern view the Kingdom has taken towards technology and cybersecurity in the region. We've been having a fantastic time exploring the conference, meeting people from far and wide. Let's kick things off at the Smart City Zone to demonstrate some SCADA exploits faced by critical infrastructure the world over, including how malicious code can lead to physical damage and even jeopardize human lives. This is important stuff, so let's take a closer look. Secure Ninja. Hi everyone, it's Andrew from Secure Ninja TV again. We're here in Saudi Arabia at Black Hat and we're in the smart city zone. There is a lot going on here. To explain what's going on, let's talk to Rana from Red Alert Labs. Rana, this is a fantastic exhibition. Tell us, what are we doing here? Thank you very much. Welcome to the smart city zone. My name's Rana from the Red Alert Lab of NSAT Security. We are a security research company that's based out of South Korea and we have our operations in Singapore, Indonesia and Japan. And we serve clients around the world. What we're doing today is we're going to be demonstrating various attacks that the smart city is vulnerable to. As security researchers, we like to break things, and this is what we're showing here to the visitors at Black Hat Middle East. Excellent. Well, I do a lot of teaching, and one of the most important realms that we teach at the moment is IoT and SCADA hacking. Um, our systems are very vulnerable to that kind of thing. Uh, I see that you've got a lot of equipment, uh, PLCs I see, um, industrial control systems. Can you show us maybe a demonstration of a hack or two? Absolutely. It would be an absolute pleasure showing the viewers of Secure Ninja. Okay, let's have a look. I see we have a system over here where we have a crane. Now, cranes are not something that we um, have in everybody's back garden, but very common in cities. Um, how would I hack something like a crane? So what you're trying to demonstrate here is that cranes, from its very nature, is not something that's digital. It's not connected to a computer network. But we're showing that this can still be hacked over radio frequency attacks. And we're doing something relatively simple for the visitors at Black Hat today. Okay. So what we're doing is we're assuming that this is the attacker's machine. And the crane here is the target. And so the crane is not connected to the internet? Correct, that's right. So what we have here is, well, we have a couple of devices. This is what the operator of the crane would use. This is the remote control, which operates the crane, right? You can see the crane moving as the remote is pressed. And then what you can see in the attacker's machine, we have the SDR, the Hack RF Software Defined Radio, that attackers are increasingly using today. Okay, so hackers go on the SDR system, excellent. And if you've got it connected to a laptop. Correct. Excellent. So for this demonstration, I'm going to show you what the attackers would do. Let's assume that the attacker machine is within the vicinity of the operator. And the operator is around operating the crane, doing their day-to-day -day business. And you can see every time a button is clicked, you can see the variation in the frequency. So, so we can see the uh, waveform being captured on the spectrum analyzer. Excellent. And what the attacker's machine is doing right now is capturing all of these signals that the operator's remote has been sending out. And the attacker would be able to do something that's known as a replay attack. So all of the signals that have been captured earlier, the attacker would be able to do even without having direct access to the remote. So now we can see that the attack is being executed. Every time you see a waveform, that means the transmission signal is being sent out. So the SDR is replaying the signal that it captured earlier and the crane is making the movements. That's correct, yes. Excellent. Well, that was really interesting. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks very much for talking to us. I think we're going to talk to your colleague, Sung. Sung, Hali, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Tell me, Sung, where are you based? So we are based in South Korea, in Seoul. In Seoul, you're based in Seoul. Excellent. Well, I have, uh, we have another simulation set up here. And if you don't mind me saying, this looks remarkably something like something that we see in Stuxnet. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this simulation, please? Yes, of course. So this testbed here is the recreation of the Stuxnet incident, obviously. So what happened with Stuxnet incident? was that one of the employees working for the nuclear power plant company he picked up a random usb from the ground and he was wondering hey maybe this belongs to my boss or does it belong to my friend he picked it up he wanted to find out who it belongs to he plugged it into his computer without any protection sure. and there 
he got the uh, all of the infection from the malwares, viruses, and etc. And that's what the hacker exactly wanted. From then on, hacker had the uh, access point. Hacker used the USB drive as the access point to get into the system and eventually take control of the entire system. So Song, we've got a lot going on here. Can you show me the different components of the attack and how it might be carried out? Okay, so you can think of area as the uh, target area. So this belongs to the employee that's working for the nuclear power plant company. This here, right, this here you see is the uh, PRC that controls the uh, device or the centrifuge. And this is the recreation of the centrifuge in nuclear power plants. Excellent. Do you want to go ahead and start the uh, malware script running and let's see what happens? Okay, sure. So this USB here will receive the commands from the attacker or the hacker. So hacker can just enter in simple um, line of codes, execute it. And from there, um, once the centrifuge receives the commands, it's going to start to run even without anybody touching or um, touching any of the uh, buttons there. Excellent. As we can see from this as well, it's not rotating at a constant speed. That's correct. So this one needs to be rotating at a constant speed so that it does not create any stress on the equipment. However, as you can see right here, it spins, it stops, spins and stops, and that's eventually going to create stress, which will result in accidents or damage on the equipment, which will cost a lot of money or maybe cost some lives as well. Excellent. And that's basically what happens in Stuxnet, that's that uh, the program ran in the background, even though the PLC was showing no errors and the monitoring equipment was showing that everything was running at a constant speed. In fact, in the background, it wasn't. That's correct. Excellent. So that's very interesting. Thanks so much for showing us that. Rana, thank you for your time. Hopefully we catch up with you guys again sometime on Secure Ninja TV. Mm -hmm. We just started this Black Hat Middle East and Africa series. So please remember to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss a thing. I'm Andrew Howard from Secure Ninja TV. We'll talk to you again soon.